Deputy Chairperson, uh, uh, panel members, and the audience. Uh, Chair, uh, it's, for us, it was very difficult to swing around our CEO's um, diary because uh, I think we were, we were scheduled for, for 3.30 this afternoon. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just one of those complex issues. But I think we, will, we can deal with the issues. And uh, we just want to um, just to reiterate that uh, we take this as a very important issue for Newtel. And I think it's uh, very important for us that, that it happens. Uh, Chair, um, uh, Ryan and, 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 and uh, Tabello is going to take you through uh, the two, the couple of issues I think that we we still have to address. And I, and if there are any questions, we will, we will basically deal with it. Um, uh, Chair, and I think uh, yeah, on that note, I think Ryan, if you want to take it, thanks. Yeah, Chair uh, and members of the panel, uh, Newtel would like to make the following submissions. Uh, Basically, the first point uh, from Newtel is that uh, LLU is a special type of facilities leasing under the ECA, and we therefore differ from uh, Telcom's uh, interpretation uh, that uh, uh, local loops are not uh, I mean, electronic communication facilities. Our, our view is based on the following. We, I mean, uh, having, having regard to uh, Section 1 of the ECA, we found that, I mean, the section lists elements of local loops as electronic communication facilities, uh, for example, uh, wires and circuits, uh, especially in the case of copper loops. The second point that we would want to raise is that Section 43.8 uh, lists local loops and sub-loops as essential facilities, which in our view are a subset of electronic communication facilities. In addition, we are of the view that uh, Section 44.3M empowers the authority to regulate the lease of un unbundled or rather the disaggregated facilities which also includes, I mean, necessarily includes the local loops and, and sub-loops. The second point that we would want to raise is in connection with the, uh, the question whether ICASA followed the right procedure or the correct procedure under the ICASA Act. More specifically, Section 4B and 4C. Newtel's uh, interpretation of, the last, of, of those provisions is that there is no requirement for ICASA to prescribe the procedures beforehand. I mean, the, our understanding is that the, the broad procedure for conducting inquiries is stipulated in Section uh, 4B and 4C of the ICASA Act. And these sections require ICASA to follow a notice and comment procedure and also gives ICASA a discretion to conduct oral hearings. In our view, uh, this accord with the process for regulation making prescribed in Section 4 of the Promotion of Administrative uh, Justice Act. Further, Section 4C of the ECA empowers the ICASA counselor presiding over the inquiry to set additional procedures. This includes issues such as calling of witnesses, the submission of documents, etc., etc. The point that we would want to repeat is that, I mean, there is no requirement in the ICASA Act, whether implicit or explicit for the procedures to be made known beforehand. And in our view, I mean, it has been ICASA's standard practice to date to follow all inquiries relating to uh, regulation-making processes with an oral hearing and to request additional submissions and documentation during the course of an oral hearing. In our view, uh, this established modus operandi is perfectly in accordance with the ICASA Act. The, another issue that we would want to raise is the 
issue of the separation of uh, uh, rural and urban LLU. Neotel's position is that uh, rural LLU should not be conflated with universal service policy. The second point is that both types of LLU should be dealt with simultaneously to prevent any further delays. Because I think here the, we find it difficult uh, in these proceedings uh, because uh, of these challenges, which in our view would obviously delay the, the implementation of the LLU process. The next issue is on the wireless local loops. Neotel's position, I mean, is that the authority should investigate the legal and technical issues relating to wireless LLU separately. Perhaps uh, one would uh, want to add on the issue of the uh, regulatory impact assessments. We, I mean, Telcom argues that ICASA should conduct a regulatory impact assessment before imposing LLU obligations. I mean, other operators have also indicated that they would welcome uh, uh, the opportunity for ICASA, or, or they, they rather put it this way, they say they, they are more than happy if ICASA can uh, conduct regulatory impact assessments. In our view, Chair and the members of the panel, we, we respectively submit that while this is preferable from a lawmaking perspective, this is not currently a requirement under the South African law. On that note, uh, I would want to emphasize that uh, Neotel reserves its rights going forward. Over to you, Ryan. Thanks. I, I just wanted to make a couple of quick points about the Africa analysis uh, discussion yesterday. You know, the first point is it didn't look like there was anything confidential in there, so it would be quite nice to actually have gotten the submission uh, to review it properly and to to give it a um, to to <clears throat> to give it the attention it's it's I mean Telcom would like it to deserve. Um, I mean, there are just a couple of points I, I just noticed very quickly as they flashed it up yesterday. It was pretty brief. The Africa analysis excluded uh, BT Global Services from their their analysis. Now, it's 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 really important for the authority to take note of the fact that incumbents globally, one of their responses has been to enter the IT services market in competition with traditional IT services providers as a response to declining fixed line re revenues. Um, Telcom's done this. Uh, Telcom submitted that that's what they wanted to do when they bought BC. One, when they wanted to buy BCX, they didn't succeed with that. They did it anyway. And they've succeeded to a large degree. I mean, according to a very recent Frost and Sullivan report, um, Telcom had a 7% a market share in 2009 in respect of managed services. So they, they're succeeding in, in mitigating uh, declining fixed line revenues. <clears throat> And they've, they've also launched a mobile service offering ATA, as you, as you will have noticed, um, and that seems to be, seems to be succeeding. Um, the other really important point that we'd like to draw the authorities' attention to is that you're not seeking through this process to regulate wholesale line charges. This is a really big difference to how LLU has been implemented elsewhere in the world. Again, I mean, we made the point in our presentation yesterday. The likely charges that Telcom will charge for, for unbundled local loops are going to be among the highest in the world, and, and you're not seeking to regulate that. And we think that, that those charges will cover any reasonable cost that Telcom um, incurs in providing those services. And we think that this will... This is a, a fundamental difference um, between the process that ECAS is following currently and the processes followed elsewhere in the world, um, not least in the UK. And that, that really is the, the last of our submissions on this issue. So we're happy to take any, any questions. Thank you, Neotel. Do we have any questions for Neotel? I declare these proceedings closed.